Ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe in a backup plan. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no need for a backup plan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are now tuned in to Jaja's mic. It's a pleasure to have you. If this is your first time joining me, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, hit the bell just so you can be notified. You've just joined the community of some of the toughest leaders on the planet. Thank you for joining. We've been looking for you. Today, I got a special message on my heart. A special message on my heart. <laughs> you. You and I should have a backup plan. And the, and the reason you and I should have a backup plan is because our first option might not work. Like your, what, 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 what will you do if your first option does not work? So before you fail, before you dive in and completely blow it, you should have a backup plan. <laughs> I have heard that so many times. If you're like me, you probably hear that almost every single time you reveal what your goals in life are. You should have a backup plan. And part of you, part of you wants to accept that logic. Like that is beautiful advice. But then there's another part of you that's like, that advice is full of... <laughs> Had to blow my nose. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe in a backup plan. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no need for a backup plan. There is a reason that you chose the initial thing in what you're trying to do right now. Actually, not trying to do. There is a reason you chose the initial decision. Oh, but you must have a backup plan. Ah, what if this doesn't work? What will you do? The embarrassment. You'll look like a fool. You'll be on the streets. How will you come back from this? You should have had a backup plan. And everybody that we take this advice from are from people who have failed to go full force on the thing in which they really want to go towards. Because, ladies and gentlemen, there is death in the backup plan. There is, there is a beauty in the second option. Because the second option is so meticulous and it's so detailed that eventually it starts to look like the more feasible option. It starts to look more promising than your first option. Because your first option, you're walking in faith. And so when things start to become difficult, when you start to see that that first option is not working, we initially, it, because we are programmed to go towards the road of least resistance by nature, by nature, by giving yourself a second option, the odds, <laughs> the odds on you pursuing that first idea are slim. You are more prone to go towards your second option. It's like, 
having a styrofoam cup. And the styrofoam cup has a hole at the bottom. So now you're pouring water into the styrofoam cup. It has a hole at the bottom. The styrofoam cup is a representation of your first option. The hole at the bottom of the styrofoam cup is a representation of your second option. So now you pour the faucet of action, your hopes, your dreams, your ambitions into that first cup, that first initial decision. And so it's not working like you planned because you got the second option that's draining, that's draining all the energy. It's draining all the liquid, all the liquid of your efforts into a second option. And so eventually when you realize that the first cup is dysfunctional, you throw away the first option, ah! And you start drinking that second option because the second option will always hydrate you. The second option will always look good. The second option will always feel good. The second option is more justifiable. The second option, you can explain it to others better. Therefore, getting that validation we so desperately need. Because I need your validation. And because I need your validation, I won't tell you just how ambitious I am. I won't tell you how much I don't truly believe in my first goal. I won't tell you how much my first goal might not work. So when you ask me, what am I doing? I'm going to tell you my second option because I can sound so good. Woo! I just want to sound good. I just want you to believe me because I'm going to be honest with you. I believe in my second option more than my first option. Oh, God, why did you give me my first love? Why did you send me that first decision? So you give yourself what the Bible calls the sweet bread of deceit. And you start to lie about how much you really care about your first option. But the truth is, the very fact that you created that second option, you're not going 100%. You will fail to see the fruits of your first initial decision if you don't go 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, before I left pre-pharmacy, I used to be a pre-pharmacy major. And the reason I love this pre-pharmacy major, the credentials and the title is because it was validated. Everywhere I would go, I would tell people all of all ethnicities. They were like, hey, what do you do? I'll say, well, I'm a pre-pharmacy major. And all every single time I would get the same reaction. Wow. You're about to be somebody. While you're going places, don't forget me when you're at the top. And this validation was so, ooh, it was so thirst quenching. I needed it, it filled me with life. So I kept telling folks, yeah, I'm a pre-pharmacy major. I'm a pre-pharmacy major. That was my second option. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't even close to believing in my first option. The second option sounded good to society. So I accepted it. The second option sounded good to Jaja. And then one day I realized I snapped out of it. As God continued to guide me towards my actual path, I realized, oh my God, even though this pre-pharmacy major has all the steps mapped out for me and the validation is already there before I've even made it into the program, I realized something very potent in the heart. 
I still need validation. But the fact that I need validation for my second option made me realize this second option will not please me. Because even though I can accomplish this, I always in the back of my mind wonder, what if? What if I would have immersed myself in the deep ocean of my first possibility? In the deep waters of my first decision? What if I would have immersed myself in that? What if it happened? Like, what if it comes to fruition? What if that thing that you want to do actually comes to fruition? What if God unlocks an opportunity so divine that you can't possibly see the steps to? Because what's for you is for you. So why are you settling for your second option? That's why you're not satisfied. I'm trying to motivate you to understand that you must go full force and fail. So what if you fail? I'd rather fail full force than to know I settled. Then to know I didn't try. What are you right now asking God for? The strength and courage to go towards, but you're scared that you're going to fail. Any self-help book, any motivational book, seminar, text that you go through will tell you, you must continue to fail hard, fail fast. You're not failing, you're learning. Who you become on this journey is part of the real you. But who you become on the journey of you settling for your second option is not nowhere near who God has called you to be. Today, after this video, Leadership Challenge, stop settling for your second option. Stop thinking more about your second option within your 24 hours than you do your first option. Pray to God. Ask God. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I ask you to continue to move my journey forward. Give me the strength and the energy that I need to continue to move towards the divine direction in which you've sculpted and crafted for my life. God, I only want to be courageous. God, I only want to be stronger. God, I only want to continue to move with purpose. Lord, allow me to touch the lives that I need to touch within my mission, within my journey, within my passion. Oh, Lord, I know passion is long-suffering. Oh, Lord, I know my passion won't be easy, but God, only guide me in that direction direction that you so disposed in my spirit. Lord, I don't want to settle for my second option. Lord, I'm done settling. Lord, I'm done settling. Give me the courage to do what you called me to do. Father, guide me. Guide me. I need you to change my life today. I need you to give me this courage and the confidence that I need today. Father, come in my life today. In the name of Jesus. If you ask God for strength today, throw away your second option. Go towards your first decision. I'm a firm believer that your life will be changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm.